So I wanted to simplify my client life with one of his blogs. This was a static sync blog that my client wanted to insert and probably I'm guessing he wanted to place it exactly in the corner, but as you can see, it's not really exactly placed. And now my client wanted also some additional useful things like for instance, showing the size of his sink and more things like that. Hello there. Welcome back to another lazy show. So the way I started it was of course, like in this show, we never want to start from scratch. I simply copy his blog to the site over here and rotated it, of course, because when we create dynamic blocks, it's always try to have the block on the correct angle or rotation. So over here, what I did is simply explode this block really quick using the explode command. And I had simply single lines like so. So now what I did is, of course, selected all of my geometry, make sure following some standards, good standards when creating blocks, layer zero, always all of your items, color by layer, that's fine by layer and so on. So what I did is simply create this block using the block command. I call this lazy sync and simply make sure I had checked the open in block editor. So that way I could immediately select my base point. Now the base point had to be a very strategic genre because here, for instance, my client has his base point on the center. This doesn't allow to him to place the sink exactly on corners. So this way, what I did then is place my base point over here in this corner, like so. So one of the first things I want to implement on this block is the ability to automatically align the sink block to a specific wall angle. So what I did then is I utilized a parameter here in AutoCAD called the alignment parameter. So this way I could simply select that and click a location on my screen. In this case, the base point of my block and then move to the side and click like so. So this way, when I tested my block and I could maybe simulate some of the walls over here. So this way, whenever I placed my block like so, I could quickly align it to the wall angle like so, or to this other wall also like so. So that was one of the first thing I implemented. However, there was a problem with this block. Well, so the problem was that what if I wanted to, for instance, place this block on the corner so I could go ahead and place it on this corner easily. However, what happened if I wanted to place it on this other corner over here? I'll have to basically guess and that's not what I want. I want a way for my client to quickly place in any corner. So the way I solved this was, the way I solved this was by using another alignment parameter on the opposite corner over here. So. I simply place it and located it like so. So this way, when my client wanted to, let's say, insert his block, let me quickly draw something over here. So when my client wanted to insert his block, so for instance, using this block palette, that's the same block, he could insert it on one corner or also if he wanted to insert it on the other corner, he could simply use the control key on his keyboard and that way he could move his base point and place it exactly on the other corner like so. So this will give him the flexibility to place this block anywhere basically and with precision. So another thing that I wanted to implement on this block for my client to simplify his life was the ability to change the width of this sink because in reality 
you will never have a one size sync that you need. So the way I did it was implementing a linear parameter over here. So following instructions, of course, I needed to specify the start point over here and finally the end point over here and like so. So there was an exclamation mark that simply means that there is something missing. In this case, what is missing is an action in order for this parameter to work properly. So, but before I applied an action, what I did is I simplified this. And now I had two grips, but I needed only one. So let me move this on the side over here. Okay. So I needed only one. So the way I simplified was selecting it and going to the number of grips. So I change it to one like so. All right. So now this parameter was missing something. That's an action. So the action that I added was the stretch action and following the instructions from the command line, which is which is a select parameter. Of course, this is the parameter select the associated point, of course, would be this grip and then select the stretch frame. So of course would be this side of my sink like so. And finally said select objects. So the objects were all of these objects like so. So after I tested this parameter in action, because another good practice when creating dynamic blocks is you never should start adding one parameter after another one and after another one without testing because sometimes you might have a problem and you will have a headache trying to figure it out where the problem comes from. So that's why I like to test all of these parameters one at a time. So that's what I did when and tested it. And over here, I saw that it was stretching nicely. However, the sink had a problem and the problem was that the ball of the sink wasn't keeping centered with the overall sink. So the way I fixed it was going to the block editor and introducing another action to this block in order to keep the ball centered when we stretch it. And the action that I added it was the, the move action. So I introduced this move action to this dynamic block and I selected my parameter, my associated point, and my objects would be the ball, of course, of the sink, like so. So a good practice is test the block. That's what I did. And after I tested this block, I immediately saw a change. The change was that indeed, my the ball of the sink was moving now but not in the way or on the way that we want which was keeping the ball center with the sink so what i did to fix this problem was select i selected the move action and went to my properties over here on the properties there was a distance multiplier that i had it to one but in order to keep this center in the block, I needed to set it to 0.5. Once I did that, now whenever I stretched the sink, the ball will now keep center also. So let's close this block editor. I also wanted for my client a way to know the size of the sink. So the way I did this, first I tried a field. A field for people who don't know is a text that could update automatically according to certain parameters. So the first thing I tried was to use a field to show the size of my sink and of course selecting the object first. I could select the distance parameter and then going under the distance option I could go ahead and say OK to insert my field and place it over here. And this way we will have the 
let me change the text we, this way we will have a smart piece of text that will update per the a stretch action now there were some limitations with this idea because even though fields are smart you will need an extra step in order to update this information and the extra step was to regenerate your drawing each time you stretch your block so that was a limitation and i wanted to have this information to update live so immediately without any responsibility from my client to do anything at all didn't want to him remembering oh i need to regenerate my drawing so the way i did it then was i utilized a different approach and the approach that i utilized was using a dimension so i utilized a dimension and i of course added it to the same size of my sink like so nothing different this is a regular dimension so far but this dimension was better than the field for this specific case because whenever of course i added this dimension but i needed to also include this dimension on the stretch action in order to work so the way I included it was simply click on the stretch action and say modify selection set and this way I could go ahead and select the same frame of the stretch and simply add or select the in this case the new dimension. So that's all I did and this way when I tested the block I could have a size of the sink but in real time like I didn't have to um, regenerate my drawing at all to see the changes I could immediately see the real size of my sink so this was awesome so but as you can see there were some problems with the dimension with the this how they display and so on not only that but my client also needed some extra information on the not only the size so the way i did this was then going to the block editor and what i did is simply select the dimension and of course change some of its information from the property palette in this case the first thing i changed was the text height it was very big so 1.5 inches was approximate the approximate height for my text and then another thing that i did was starting turning off some of the properties of this dimension for instance the arrows so i set those to none so that way i only will start seeing the text another thing i did turn off was the dim line one and dim line two as well as the extension lines we will only need the text from this dimension so now then of course i needed to place my text on the correct location so this was a little tricky because if we just if i just simply move it around it will cause some issues with the block so i had to be careful over here and the way i fixed this issue with the dimension was simply hover over the grip and i said so i did say center vertically so that's what i selected and this way i could have my text placed exactly on the middle without altering or messing up with the dimension which will cause problems inside a block so the last thing i added it to my dimension was the name of the block in this case i went to the option over here that says dim suffix and i added it the word sync and before moving to the next step i went ahead and tested the block to see if there were some problems or issues but the block was working nicely updating the size and the information of the sync live without any input from my client such as regenerating a drawing to update its information now there was still a problem with the block with the sync block 
and I wanted to simplify my client's life even further. So, but giving him this block with unlimited sizes was problematic. As you can see, my client will have so many options <laughs> like this. So the way I simplified this block even further was by setting some some standard sizes for this block what i did is selected the parameter and the distance one parameter and went to my property and the first thing i changed was the distance name in this case i changed it for width to provide this information so my client understand easily all of these parameters so i went and changed the parameter value instead of saying distance type none i change it to list and the reason why i change it to list was because sinks come in some standard sizes you won't have like a two feet sink two feet one sink two feet two sink that's not how it works so this way i could have the option to set some values so far we have only the two feet width sink but I could go ahead and after searching some standard sizes or width for sync, I knew that they will also come on a 30 inches width as well as 36, 48, 60, and 72. So once I added all of these values, I immediately see some changes, changes which were these lines over here and i immediately knew that i did it correctly so now the next time oh, i was ready with this block so i simply closed and saved the changes to my block so and now the next time that my client wanted to use his sim block or insert things in his floor plans i'm going to erase this over here for instance over here in this restroom so the next time that he needed to insert his sink, which in this case was the lazy sink, he could simply go to his to the block palette and insert his sink. And let's say he needed to insert it all the way in this corner. That's not a problem. He could use the control key and then quickly place his block like so. Not only that, but let's say he had a different restroom layout like this one where he needed a sink so that's not a problem he could quickly insert his sink and simply align it to the wall and finally stretch his sink accordingly like so and the information will update so i'm gonna upload or post this blog to my patreon page before i forget and patrons only yeah so I'm ready to pause this now. Awesome. I hope you had a wonderful rest of the day. See you here next Sunday.